Thanks for subscribing to Director's Point of View, a podcast from Ballet Met. I'm Brett Johnson. In each episode, I talk with Ballet Met's artistic director, Edward Liang, about the upcoming Ballet Met performance. The 2017-18 season is Ballet Met's 40th anniversary season, and it's packed with company and world premieres and features cutting-edge works. I caught up with Edward to talk about Front Row, a collection of short ballets. The 2017-18 season kicks starts with parallel connections. First, uh, the new season and first performance will be a first for a few new dancers to the company. Let's talk more about them. Well, you know, I think that this is um, such an exciting year, 40th anniversary. Um, It's celebrating the old and the new. And the dancers that have signed on to Ballet Met, I'm super excited about. Um, Will William Newton, and um, Madeline Scully. They're both dancers from Houston Ballet, as well as um, Jim Nikowski, uh, who used to be with San Francisco Ballet. But uh, in the past recent years, he's been doing a lot of commercial dance. He was on So You Think You Can Dance uh, two seasons ago, and a spectacular dancer. Um, we also have Sean Rolfston, who used to be with Pacific Northwest Ballet and with San Diego City Ballet. We brought back Peter Curta, from, uh, former dancer from Ballet Met 2. Uh, now he's a full company member. And we have Darian Kane, who is a new company member, but she was from Ballet Met 2 last year. And on top of that, we have two dancers um, that are even newer, they just signed on. Um, and it's uh, Sophie. And I'm having, I always have such a hard time uh, pronouncing her last name. It's M- M- Mikhail, I can't. Anyway, Sophie. And uh, same thing, there's a, another male, his name is Andy Sosa. So this year is the largest company that we've had since I've been artistic director. It's 27 full company members, seven Ballet Met 2 dancers, and uh, 30 trainees. So it's a, a, a growing organization, which is so, so fitting for our 40th anniversary season. How do you approach a new season with new talent that you have, and maybe the largest number of two talent, new talents that you've had? You know, I I think that it's it always, this is a part of ballet company culture is there's always dancers that retire or decide to leave the company and new dancers bring, um, a new knowledge, um, fresh, a breath of fresh air. And, um, it gives the dancers that are here an ability to uh, learn from what they've experienced in their careers and makes them better, makes them better dance partners. It makes them better um, communicators. It They understand what's outside of Columbus, Ohio. So it, it I think it's always a win-win. Ballet Met and the Ohio State University Department of Dance will perform separately, then join forces on stage. Uh, talk about the separate and joint pieces. Well, we're kicking off our 40th anniversary with such a spectacular program. It's at the Mershon and we're collaborating with OSU dance, but also the Wexner center of arts. And since I have come and moved to Columbus, one of my dreams is to really partner with the Wexner center. I really absolutely adore and believe in what Sherry Gelden has done in the past two decades for the WEX. And um, I just thought that this program could really kick off what is on the opposite end of our spectrum. You know, Ballet Met does classical ballets, full lengths, and some really contemporary works. And this program starts off with the first William Forsyth Potida that is going to be in Columbus, Ohio. William Forsyth is the choreographer um, that has that I would consider broke the mold of ballet. 
And, you know, OSU has partnered with um, Bill Forsyth for a very long time, but has never had his work here. And we've never been able to get his work. So I'm really excited to start that process. We're doing a potato from Slingerland. And then um, we're bringing back James Kadelka's Man in Black. And the choice for that is because it's an amazing ballet. And two, is that it was created here and has gone all over the world. So we really want to show that what we're doing is working. And then OSU Dance is doing a Merce Cunningham ballet called Minivent. And together, uh, Ballet Met and OSU Dance Department is doing Minus 16 from Ohad Narin, which is a powerful, powerful work that I think will blow this community away. You have a long track record of collaborative work. Uh, how much more prep and planning goes into those performances? Collaboration, I think, is imperative um, for Columbus and arts organizations. That's what I think. Um, it, it gives opportunity for us to learn and to share and be even more part of this community. But it is a logistical nightmare. Um, luckily, this collaboration with um, the Wexner Center and OSU Dance is had ch its challenges, but everyone has been so amazing to work with. So um, it is not that it's just, you know you're just having to understand two more cultures beside yourself and how they work. More paperwork, more meetings, more dynamics. Um, more small details and logistics, but in the end of the day, it's so worth it. You get a chance to cross pollinate audiences too. I, I think that that is, um, you know, it's really interesting is that, uh, other cities, um, they are a little bit more afraid of, um, collaboration and cross pollinization because, to give you an example, if the symphony invited the, the ballet company, in another city. Um, and there was a small little, little blurb, um, dance in the symphony program where ballet, the ballet company was a part of it. Some of the, uh, symphony constituents and their, you know, their fans will just basically say, Oh, well, we don't need to see ballet this year. We've already seen it. So, but here in Columbus, Ohio, which is amazing is that when they come and see something, it strikes more imagination and it does do what we want it to do in terms of cross pollinization. And that's why I think collaboration works very well here, but that's not always the case everywhere else. Is this the first that you've performed at Mershon and worked in Mershon? It's since I have been artistic director, Ballet Met has performed and worked with, um, uh, worked in Mershon before, just um, prior um, me signing on as artistic director. What do you think of Mershon so far working? I It's such a great house. Um, and who doesn't want to be a part of the Wexner Center? And they're this world-famous institution. And now they've been producing groundbreaking, cutting-edge work for two decades now. And what's, I think what's funny is that, like most cities, with world-famous institutions, I think people outside of Columbus knows the Wexner Center and understands how, what a heavy hitter they are versus what, I think, people that live in town. But that's the case everywhere. It's always the way. Thanks again for your insights on uh, the upcoming Parallel Connections. Yeah. Thank you for always having me. Director's Point of View podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker, or your favorite podcast player. When you have a moment, give us a rating and a comment. That helps spread the word about the podcast. And share the podcast on social media. Another great way to spread the word about Director's Point of View. Circle270media.com 